boy. Hello, big boy. I don't know. I can't hear them anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, they just. She's. It's impressive to have a big male lion walk past. All right. Hello, everybody. We have got a male lion behind us. I'm going to let this other car quickly past us. We'll just pull off. We need to turn around. The only thing, though, is if he goes towards the rest of the pride, we're not going to be able to follow him. So make sure that they're past us. But he walked right past me, my goodness. And he was so close. It's really quite intimidating when you don't have a door on the car. And I mean, we've, I've had many lions walk past me with no door, but just to see the size of them is just absolutely incredible. Put hairs against my arm. And you see them, they know you're in there. They look at you and they go, oh, I, know that, I know that there's something inside there. I don't think they're as, uh, as um, unintelligent as we sort of make out. Again, I don't think they're as intelligent as an elephant or a dolphin or anything along those lines. And we just need to try and get a look. Let's quickly have a quick look at him. Just over there, we're gonna lose him. Gotta be quick, Greg. There he is, and this is Nana, by the way. Um, he's a beautiful looking lion. He's got the equal scar on his nose as he walks away. A very unscathed face compared to the rest of, well, especially compared to Tinyon and Fumo. There you go. He's going to come through that next gap. We just try and grab a couple of looks through here. Now it's a bit dark because we're relying on the other guy's spotlight. Okay, let's catch up. Now he's gone, actually gone past where the other lines were, which is great. So he hasn't quite worked out that there's anybody just 50 meters from us to our left. That means we can follow him, which is fantastic. So we went off just down here and around the corner. He's obviously looking for them, but they're not making much noise. They were contact calling when we arrived in the sighting first, but then they quietened down. That's maybe what drew his attention. And now he's on the roll. Something, something has bitten me on my neck. It's not very nice insects. Okay, let's see if we can get another view. Here we go. Let's have another quick look at him as he walks off into the distance. Okay, I'm going to quickly go past. We've just been called around. We'll do leapfrog. Thank you very much. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to play a game of leapfrog, which we often do. So uh, we'll have a look now. And there we go. So as we're driving, Craig's obviously going to stay on him, but you will probably see a bit of movement in the car, so don't worry about that. We just think we're going to try and get the best view. Now, I hope he does a big roar for us. That would be really quite wonderful. But he's on, on a patrol at the moment. We've had some rain. It's washed away most of the scents from scent uh, marks that they have made from last night. And then, of course, a little downpour we had this morning. So it's important that he goes around and reestablishes his territory. We're going to try to catch up with him. He's going off onto an animal pathway. Um, just trying to see. He's going down that way. Oh, my goodness. Now, see, do you're wondering how big can a male lion get? They can get massive. Uh, the Birmingham boys, I don't think, are particularly large. Now we need to just try and find our way in here. Actually, there's a power line, old track here. Um, so I think these Birminghams probably weigh between, I think about 185 kilograms. So what is that? Almost just, just under 400 pounds, almost 400 pounds, somewhere around. They, they're not particularly big. If you go towards the, the Charlestons, which are two male lines that roam around on the southern sector of the Sabi Sands, they're massive. They'll be closer to just over 200 kilos, I would, I would say. And Nena's not small, though. He's, he's definitely, he's quite tall. I mean, especially now that he just walked past me. Right, oh, here he comes. Fantastic, he's gonna pop out next to us. Let me get the spotlight. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna wait for him. He's gonna come out. Here he is, he's coming, you won't see him, he's just coming to my side, but we'll watch him now, there he is. And again, with a spotlight, we're not gonna shine it in his eyes, we just shine it just off of his body. He's a beautiful lion though, an absolute stunner. Isn't this incredible? We've had the most unbelievable safari this evening.
Now we're gonna play leapfrog again. So we're gonna be sort of jumping in front of each other as, uh, as we go along, which is fine. We have to take turns while we're here. Now, uh, Cedar, thank you for all of your questions this evening. I'm thoroughly enjoying them. Uh, you've asked if I think that they've made a kill. Uh, I don't. I, I don't even know what the sticks are doing here. They must have been chased by somebody because the Nguhumas have now gone to the western corner. The sticks have ended up here. And the last time that I heard the sticks lions were actually hanging around a next shelly somewhere down there, a little bit further south from where Arethusa is. So I don't know if the Talalas have maybe made an appearance and chased them off. You know, we're, we're obviously unsure about these things and we can only speculate. But I don't think that they've made a kill. Maybe they will make a kill tonight. It's good hunting weather. Clouds, not very many stars are going to be seen this evening, and a bit of wind. So it really, really uh, does help the lions. It's in their favor for them to go hunting. But at the moment, they're just catching small things. Impala and Yala could do where they can. A zebra would be ideal or a wildebeest, because remember, the buffalo are not around at the moment. They are all hiding about. We'll just keep tailing like this, and if there's an opportunity to zip around, we definitely will. And what we'll maybe even do is I see that this car in front is definitely a photographic vehicle. There's lenses that are, my goodness, taller than I am. And what would be quite nice for them is if we get in front and we actually backlight that lion, which would be really nice. So we try and help each other out when we're on safaris. You've got to think about things like this. When guests do come out, you know, there are a lot of people very interested in photography these days, and you don't need the fanciest DSLR. These uh, little uh, compact cameras are fantastic nowadays. So it's nice to play around and give people interesting shots because you never know when someone that's come from the USA or from China or from Australia, when they're going to get another opportunity to come back and view these animals in the wild again so we make sure that they have a fantastic experience well we try our best don't we and I'm sure everyone's having a great drive I don't I think it was very quiet this morning all right so we're gonna keep having a look around here now unfortunately it seems as though there's the lion again he just marked his territory quickly um, it seems as though Wendy's having some, some issues. I'm uncertain as to what the issues are, but she has returned back to camp. Now you're stuck with me, unfortunately. Okay, cool. We're gonna stay with them. And what we'll do is we'll do the backlighting. Let me just inform, find the right radio. I'll backlight the Singala for you if you'd like. There we go. I don't even know what I'm driving over at the moment. It's um, very long grass, as you can see. But we're just gonna hang back, and like I said, we can, oh my goodness, I can see some big stumps coming up. You just gotta be careful here. I think they're gonna turn around and come into the sighting. Oh my goodness, what is that? Termite mount slash stump. Better not drive over that. We've driven in en into enough trees for one day. There is an impala, I kid you not, you won't see it. It's about 30 meters over there, standing dead still in the bushes. It's watching the lion. It actually hasn't even alarmed. And that's a good idea just to stay quiet and stay hidden. So this will be very nice for these guys. They're going to wait. We're going to backlight this beautiful lion. Oh. He's just walked into an entire herd of impala. They're all snorting now, but it doesn't seem like he's interested. Now, Junkie, you were wondering if Nsuku and Nena are brothers. Yes, t technically all four of the Birminghams are brothers, but we don't know if they're directly blood-related. It's, it's very hard to tell because we didn't see their pride as the, the, well, the Birmingham boys come from the Birmingham farm, which is situated in the Timbavati. So they've come from the same pride. Whether they're from the same female, I'm uncertain. Um, th there could definitely be an opportunity that they're from the same female or also uh, they could become from different females. And I think Nena and Suku are slightly older uh, than, than Tinyo and Mfumo. You can definitely see that with their manes. Let me, let me do a bit of backlighting here. Let's see. As he marks, it might be quite nice. No, not really working too well. But beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. How lovely is that? Very cool. He's gone on to Triple M now. 
Right, let's get another shot of him. I can't even hear the radio anymore. Let me just turn this up again. Okay. Right, back to where we started. This is where we came in. Let's follow him for a little bit. I don't know if they're going to follow us as well. Actually, what we might do, no, we won't be able to. I was going to see if we could get in front of him, but I th actually, hold on, Greg. Let's try luck. Or is he coming here? Is he coming on to, he might actually be coming. He's going to come into Duma. He's, he's now using the luxury facilities. Oh no, please let's not be downwind of this lion as he uses the bathroom. That's not going to be great. I'll just illuminate him slightly. This is lovely, don't you think? We see him marking his territory, we see him walking, and now we see him using the luxury facilities. Isn't that great? Amazing. No privacy for you, lion. <laughs> But, uh, well, he doesn't mind, though, anyway. Now, we're not going to go anywhere. We're definitely going to stay with this boy for as long as we can. I'm going to send you across to Tristan, who seems to be a mechanic and is out and running again. Right. We're <laughs> trying to navigate through long grass, as you can see. I have no idea what I'm driving on or where I'm driving through. And I just hope we don't fall into a hole. We're trying to catch up with him. Oh, my goodness. I don't know why I'm going. Let's try. Oh, please don't be any big holes. Please don't be any big holes. We're buried in the long grass. I'm trying to get another view for you. Ooh, it's so scary. Not really, that's not that scary. I've driven over much worse, but I'm trying to very slowly get in front of him. But this is actually proving quite difficult because I also don't want to fall into a hole and get stuck. Okay, let's gun it. Let's gun it. When I say gun it, I'm going about 10 kilometers an hour. It's not very quick at all, but you can see him. Okay, I'm gonna go past him. Please don't be any big bumps. Please don't be any big bumps. Okay, we're almost past him. I, do, I need to get a bit further ahead, of course, though, so that I can turn around and we can view him and we can just reverse. Almost, almost, almost. Almost a little bit further. Just want to do a big gap. Woo! So <laughs> I love safaris. Safaris are just wonderful. Should we just let's watch him walk past us? Yeah. He's coming, but we'll just be patient because there's now cars down this side and then there's cars here. So we'll actually just wait for him. We'll just sit patiently and he's going to walk straight in front of us. I mean, we've got lots and lots of cars joining us in the sighting, of course. He's coming slowly. How are you? Hello. Sorry, let me turn my light off. Let me not blind you all anymore. I'm blinding all the cars. Now you're going to see quite a few flashes coming from the different directions. Everyone is very excited to see a big male lion at night. It's one of the most amazing things. But you should, he's going to pop out in just a minute. Five, four, oh, there we go. Now, my countdown is really bad, and that's why I'm not a director. I'm just a presenter. Isn't he beautiful? Hello, gorgeous. He's actually going to walk right past their car. You can see how close he gets. Look at that. Doesn't even care. So happy to just walk right past him. Hey? Me, no. What about him? Oh, <laughs> Peter is giving me, saying that he stinks. I couldn't hear what he said. I thought he said, is it the sticks? I'm playing bush broken telephone. Now we're gonna keep driving through the long grass here, which is my favorite. I feel like I'm Jurassic parking right now. Like that scene where they're trying to lose the velociraptors through that field. That's what I feel like I'm doing right now. Obviously, it's not quite as long, but as we start to hit the thatching grass, we're gonna disappear in it. Now he's right next to us again. I'm gonna try and go past him. Please don't be any big rocks or sticks or termite mounds. Okay, we're gonna, woo, hold on, Craig, hold on. All right. Same up. 
I'm going to turn around now. I'm just chatting to the guides, of course, as we try and uh, have a chance. And we'll have a quick chance. Everyone's doing what we're doing, taking the... Oh, I, I can hear a rattling sound. I don't know what I've broken now. Okay, we're going to let him walk past us. Okay, I'm just going to dim my lights slightly. No, oh, there we go. And here he comes. Here he comes. This is very cool. He's going to walk right past us. I'm just going to triple check to see if it is Nena. I thought it was. It is, yes. I can see on his right nostril those two, those two stripes. Look at him. There he goes, out of frame again. Oh, he's so big! <laughs> he's really big. They're not, they're, they're, they're still not as big as other lions as I've, I've seen before. Um, but that's really incredible. Now I'm going to turn around again. Whew, my goodness, my heart, the adrenaline is absolutely pumping this evening. Oh, now we've got to do a 77 point turn here. Oh, hold on, Craig, as we try and pop our way around on this. Oh, no, we've hit another boundary. Let's try it. Yes, yes, it wasn't too bad. Okay, we're gonna go around again. We're gonna sneak past Peter's vehicle. I'll put my lights back on in a moment. It's just I don't wanna blind the guests. Turn the radio down a little bit. Right, oh, okay, cheers. Have a good night. Right, we've got the whole sighting to ourselves. Can you believe that? So now we can have the lights on all the time. We don't have to worry about blinding anybody. So we're just gonna follow him down the road very slowly. First gear. Low range. We're just going to let the car do its thing as we follow this Birmingham boy. Now it just shows you as well as we sit here and we watch him. We um, we can see that they're not afraid to be on their own, the Birminghams. They're actually quite confident in splitting up and doing their own thing. Now I wonder where he's going to go. If he's going to go and try and locate the... Let's put the big lights on now. There we go. Now we're talking. Um, we, I think he might be going towards Simbambili because we are on Triple M. We've still got a, probably about a mile away from the gate, so not too far. So he may turn off. Maybe he's even going to cut through Vietella and go back north towards uh, um, the Manuleti and then back into Biffles Hook. You never really know. But there is, I can see lights coming from the distance, so we'll keep these bright ones on him for as long as we can. But we'll have to dim them so we do not blind the guests that are in the other car. JP, wondering why these lions are ignoring humans as we get so close. And all that is, it's just that these animals are habituated to the vehicles and the sounds and the smells of humans now. And we also don't behave like people when we're in the cars. They see this one big object, though when the lion walks past you and you haven't got a door on, I'm pretty certain that it can see that there's something inside. So uh, they don't mind us. And the big cats, leopards and lions become very easily habituated. They become so relaxed that, like you've just seen, will walk right next to the car. We give them the option. We give them space. If they hesitate and they move around, then you've got to drop it back. Like at the moment, I'm following him. I'm probably about 45 yards away. You can see we're actually quite a distance away. And there's nothing worse than tailing an animal uh, right up onto the top of their heels. So we'll just give him space. Luckily, Craig's got a great camera. It's got a great zoom. So we don't need to get so close. So it is nice to have them walking past the car every now and then. Um, but obviously, you've got to read their behavior. You, you need to just watch them for a little bit before you do something like that and sit very still. You don't want to be jumping around when a big male lion walks past the car because honestly, there's nothing stopping them from jumping in other than they've just learned that we are not food. But if you entice them in any way, well then I suppose you've got to have the constant, you've got to well, feel the consequences whether that means you get into a bit of trouble. So that's what we keep telling the guests. And you, I don't know if you heard Peter as the lion walked past, he constantly reassured his guests. He said, everything's okay, just sit still. Don't jump around, make sure you sit still in your seat. And that's all you do, you just keep reiterating things to, to calm people down, because it is quite intimidating. We'll keep following this boy for a little bit longer, and I'm gonna send you back across to Tristan for a very quick update.